What up, fellow headbangers? How you doing? I'm Rob O'Day, and welcome to the greasiest of all time. Today, we're chilling with Chronic Hill out of Kelowna, BC. How you guys doing? Good, bro. Well. Why don't you introduce here. yourselves and uh, let us know how you guys got together? Why don't you, you start, Steve? Ahead. What do you want? Me first? Yeah, you go. Uh, well, Steve Tracy, uh, rhythm guitar player, uh, co-founder... I don't know. What else can I say? Uh, I got a couple other guys here uh, behind me. I got uh, Mike Swanson, guitar player. Hey. Get your horns in there, brother. Fuck something. Mark's playing the drums in the back. <laughs> and I'll go over to Mr. Mr. Dredger on the other side there. How you doing? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm also Steve. So we're, you know, Steve and Steve, Steve Tracy, and then Tracy, the bass player, and then I'm Steve, the singer. Uh, we do keep it straight most of the time. We remember what to call each other. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm the singer. Um, I was the last one to join these guys. Uh, they were sort of in the, the formative process. Uh, worked out a bunch of the kinks before I ever came in the door. Nice. How long have you guys been together for? Well, well the core I of us, me, Mike, and Mark, uh, we went back to the 80s. <laughs> 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 to be honest that's awesome but uh chronic kill's only been uh as it is now since what this is our third year rolling 2021 since we put the little unit together steve you've been here almost two years though haven't you almost two years but it was sort of like one year pre-covid and then COVID hit. So we were just, we were just coming out of the yeah, Cape. Yeah. We got two shows in. I uh, had the third and fourth booked. And then uh, COVID hit, right? So then the breaks have kind of got hit on everything there. So, yeah, well, a couple of years of, you know, regular hard work of regular life kind of rock and roll shit. And then COVID hit. So three years. So two years and a COVID year. Yeah. <laughs> All right. You guys released your first single. Uh, when was that? Recently? Uh, yeah, that was July, was 2020, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. last summer. Yeah, yeah right so in the, the middle summer. of everything, Canada Day. Wow, hey, yeah. how was that experience trying to record when everything was just starting oh, to lock down? You know what? We, we, uh, we threw it together with the plan and, and trying to get in and out of restrictions, and we found a little studio that allowed us to just get in there and get it done, and we did it all before all the restrictions hit, and then it got produced, and then it took a couple months, but... Everything was going crazy by the time the single came out, but we actually recorded it back in like March, just before everything got shut down. So, and it was uh, it was a one day, three times off the floor, and then get it into post production. Yeah, one day, half a day. <laughs> yeah, half a day of day. setup. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Where did you guys record? Uh, we were out in uh, West Kelowna at Pure Sound. Oh, okay. Independent guy, uh, just doing his own thing and it was connected through uh, legion hq okay through kyle and all them yeah 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 that's funny i grew up with kyle he was my mom's guitar player <laughs> oh that's unbelievable yeah. there yeah. you go like so, I, he's i think he's like two years older than me we grew up together it's it's pretty funny he's, awesome. i've watched him i've watched him go from playing in my basement to like headlining shows with big artists i'm like god damn that guy's yeah. awesome he's a genuine yeah, dude he's, he's helped him quite a bit over the last couple years too so can't yeah. can't leave him out of the picture. He's been a big part of getting us something somewhere. Yeah, I mean he does a lot for the Okanagan too, so that's a good thing. Oh, he does. I know. That's what we're all about: trying to keep everybody motivated in the Okanagan, especially because it was just starting to be thriving again, and it just right. Got right. Oh, it's crazy, man. Yeah, no, the past couple of years were really good, especially with Mutants. Like there was tons of good bands, especially from Kelowna. You've got so many bands that are unheard of, like Drop Dead Fred. One yeah. of the greatest BC great, bands, great you know what band, I mean? Like man, Chase and them band. are such yeah. amazing guitar players. Yeah, and it, guys it's just started. sad. And then you got you got Randy over at Arc and Fire, and it's like so many good bands coming out of Kelowna. Like the four of us, and then I know that there's I can't remember their name. Um, younger guys. Younger yeah, they're bands. younger guys, and they're really high energy. I can't remember. Death Machine and. Uh, the unending, all those yeah, guys. The unending, I think it is. I think that's who I'm. Um, I'm thinking of. How do you guys uh, yeah. usually? Yeah. How do you guys usually go about uh, your writing style? Steve, you want to take that? Oh uh, sure. Um, I throw the lyrics on at the end. At this point, pretty much. So uh, the the think tank happens usually when I'm not in the room. Um, these guys do a lot of the a lot of the legwork. 
Um, even, you know, it's uh, smoothly and very naturally is how it seems to come together. Not a lot of real discussion goes into it. Um, once, once it's, and it is, you know, three quarters established before I, I ever get my ears on it type of thing, where these guys do the, the hard work, the, the heavy lifting, if you will. And then, um, you know, run it past me. I, I take it home, listen to it, start trying to come up with a concept, lyric wise. Um, everything I've come up with so far seems to have floated. We haven't, you know, had any um, issues in that. So it naturally is the best way I can say it seems to come together. These guys seem to cut it together. Um, we do the, the editing process in the room, you know, uh, I think the biggest thing we've had to do is no, no, we got to shave that down. Got to shave that down just <laughs> a little bit, just a little bit, you know, because these guys you know, they, minutes minutes for a bit, like. they get all those riffs in there. It's like, man, you know, but you know, that's about, you know, we, we edit it, shave it down a little bit, I think, but um, not a lot of discussion or, you know, let alone argument goes into that aspect of it. It seems to come together quite nicely. And you guys got a wicked style too. It, uh, it's very, very original metal like it reminds me a lot of pantera which is what i love like your vocals especially like when you're hitting some of those fucking notes i'm just like yes <laughs> this reminds me of phil so good and it's uh it's cool to see because there's uh, there's another band out of texas that i think like you guys would link really well in a show unfortunately they're on the complete opposite <laughs> side of north america but wow. um yeah, it's cool to well, see we're, we're that all style. Old school, man, we're all old schoolers. We all grew up with trash in our day, bro. We're all, yeah, you know, just no, trying to keep the dream alive. Get back to a couple of shows, have some fun. Well, and that's and the cool thing because you said you guys were together the since the '80s, right? Take off, you know. It's all supportive of, of the the new bands and everything else that's going on. I'm all about it. To keep the legacy going after we're long gone. We've only got a few good years left. Maybe we're gonna make make the best of it, right? So, yeah, and, and I think that says a lot. For the love of metal, I mean, there's no money or nothing in it for us other than just the pure joy of playing. Yeah. Well, and I, I bring it down to sometimes, you know, like, yeah, I'm no spring chicken at this anymore, <laughs> but um, I kind of do it still because I don't know how not to do it, or I've been doing it longer than I've been yeah. not doing it, so I'm kind of unfamiliar with life without living at set list to set list. Yeah, it's just breathing um, at this point. A lot. It's, it's sort of second nature mm -hmm. and uh, sort of the, the coming out of the shutdown of the live music is kind of weird for me because you know i'm involved with other entertainment aspects pro wrestling and stuff like that it's just like no gigs zero at all anywhere um it's starting to open up a little bit again but you know i'm kind of i'm pretty trepidatious about the uh the soft opening at this point you know yeah for sure no it's a uh, it's a cool thing to see that you guys are still thriving in that metal mentality because and you're and you're open we don't to know anything else, man. And you're open, <laughs> yeah, right. Else. But it's cool to see that you're open to the newer styles, because I think that's well, the one. Sure. That's the one thing that drives me nuts in metal is the people who think that metal progressing to what it is today is a bad thing. No, it has. Oh, to. definitely not. No, it no. has to. Yeah. Without the progression, then what's going to carry forward? The old's still going to stay. But you got to keep moving. You got to keep everybody moving together. That's what it's all about from the beginning. Yeah, for sure. Keep it all going. But it is. Everything has its time. I mean, music's timeless anyway, right? So you got to progress with it. But the old stuff well, never going to go away. And that's just very important, too, that you do have to progress with it, right? Because um, I think at a certain point in time in our lives, you know, us guys be sort of the elder statesman in this. Um, you don't uh, listen to as much new music in the same way you did when you were younger. You almost have to make a conscious effort to search it out. Because now we're getting a bit older, maybe more set in your ways. I know what I like yeah. and I know what I don't like, right? So it's almost harder if you have to put the active effort into, you know, having the trying to find the new stuff or trying to find what's going on out there. It's more of an active effort where, you know, I could fall backwards into cool shit when I was 18 all day long, right? Oh, check this out. Check this out. Now it's like, well, I know what I like. I know what I don't like, you know, it's, we'll just start with that artwork. I don't know if I'm going to like this, right? So you got to actively <laughs> go out of your way to try and open your mind to the new stuff. And definitely it has to keep progressing. Yeah, for sure. I think I have a weird addiction for finding the newest music, the newest bands. So I definitely love this aspect of doing these interviews with bands from all over the world because you get to meet the bands way before back in the day bro all about finding the new tapes that came out you know cassettes were hot items and everybody trading and underground and recording and passing that's all we had now oh, that's click buttons and boom it's all there for 
Yeah, no, when I was in high school, me cool. and my buddies had competitions of who could find the newest bands, and we'd always share it with each other. I guess you're and one like, of those too. Yeah, yeah, you know, you're just like, oh, yeah, well, I found this band, and then they're yeah. all jealous, and you're like, yeah, yeah. that's right. And uh, it's it's cool to see that slowly yeah, come back. Across your fucking locker to see how many bands you found. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's definitely cool to see the progression of metal over as long as I've been in it is 15 years. 20 years and i mean the progression in it in that time alone is crazy it is it's oh and it's in the talent polarizing talent. times too yeah like i remember slipknot's first album and then i think about it and i'm like i was like nine years old eight years old when slipknot first dropped their first album and i was like listening to I mean, it 99 live and they it was mind-boggling yeah, it kind of changed the world. And that's what I was going to say. Like, you know, there's a lot of pivotal moments there. You know, Sabbath, every, when you hear that for the first time, you know, mm-hmm. Slipknot was a big game changer in metal type of thing. Mm-hmm. But um, from our year where we came up, we watched the um, the progression of the extreme, right? Yeah. Watching it get heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier. heavier. And then, you know, and then sort of maxing out and then splintering mm-hmm. off from there, right? And now we have a lot of subgenres that just didn't exist back in the day, right? But watching the, the progression of the heaviness was something that I was found very interesting and something we sought out when we were young. Like, oh, I got this band. They're even crazier than that band, right? Like, They're okay, the most brutal up, black metal band. Yeah, it's, or, <laughs> yeah, it's faster than you, you've ever heard. This is the most brutal vocalist you've ever heard in your life the craziest drummer but going back to things like when we didn't have the subgenres, um like you look at early sepultura and stuff like that when these guys were doing the prototype of the the blast beat and they, they weren't even good at it if you know what i mean you know <laughs> oh, man, yeah. that first sepultura album um sloppy in a complimentary way like i yeah. really enjoyed listening to that because of the intensity level and then watching you know it's like um, all early lars the, too like you know pre uh pre-triggered drums you know mm-hmm. yeah no it's thing. like an early lars too he's never on time <laughs> but it didn't fucking matter because oh, he no, was playing no. hard. Ooh. It was yeah. emotion, right? And I think that's I think that's one thing the that passion. is lacking. Yeah. That's definitely one thing that lacks in um popular music nowadays is that passion. That well, we're hoping that, that drive the passion without all the technical abilities. We're just well, staying at what we know. Things should sound good. Things should sound good. Things should sound clear. But I think sometimes when, to myself, my opinion is when music gets too highly produced, to me, it loses an excitement level because there's no danger anymore, even though if it's really heavy music, right? I do like the sound of a band that's kind of, you know, careening around a On corner the edge. very fast, just, you know, but they're, they're holding the corner, you know what I mean? Really highly produced music to me is just driving in a straight line. That gets fucking boring after a while. Yeah, it's driving in Alberta. You're just yeah, I was, yeah, was going to make the prairie joke. Saskatchewan, right? You're just falling good. asleep, like... Yeah. Yeah, no, I I definitely didn't even think that was a, a legit thing until I went on tour to Saskatchewan and I was like, oh my God, where are my mountains? What is going on here? Uh, first time I toured in the, uh, down the prairies, um, I hadn't been out on tour that direction before. We started traveling overnight and like, oh, it's morning, wake me up and we're pulling into Calgary. I'm like, right on, so they wake me up and I look around and straight piece of highway and a light in the distance mm-hmm. so wake me up when we get something to eat i guess and back to yeah sleep. there's nothing to look at yeah no it's uh it's it's weird too because i mean um most of the bands i talk to from like the states one of their their capitals in a state is is bigger than vancouver right and they have so many venues and so many bands and then you look at the okanagan which is just it's a whole of nothing anymore like it used to have venues all over the place yeah i know i know in penticton we used to at least have five venues and now there's one but they only do country and acoustic so it's there like there's nowhere to reach out for the metal community and i definitely well, like it wasn't when we were young either right and i think that's we had to go make our own parties and jams and festivals and build our own stages and make hand-drawn posters and hand out stuff to make it happen man and Did that's that what i think 90 I think that's what these this generation needs to to hear too is like the dedication that fans when you guys were growing up and you guys yourself were doing like you would you you know like it I always wish I look at the movie Rockstar with Mark Wahlberg and I just (laughs) wish that shows were like that still (laughs) you know what I mean like I'm like fuck I wish yeah and just even in general just like you you but you have a show and you're not you're a cover band and everyone shows up but like instead of like five bucks for five bands and they're like eh, i don't want to go in it's too convenient now 
too, yeah, too it's, easy. It's too flooded. Take it definitely. It'll be another show next week. Yeah. Well, yeah. it might be a positive, positive outlook from this, the, you know, once we get past the uh, present situation um, that, you know, maybe people will realize, you know, how the value of the live music there, you know, and it's, you don't know what you got till it's gone. Right. So maybe that person that was on the fence will now go, fuck. Yeah. Let's get to that yeah. show. And maybe people you won't know, take it for granted. Maybe, maybe it'll help if there's a silver lining, maybe that's it. Yeah. I definitely think that the uh, community in general, all over the world, like doesn't matter where you are, the metal community just needs to say fuck it, screw venues, and just start renting out what they can to do shows. Like, we, like we had to when I was a kid. Like rent a church yep. if you got here. Yep. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's rent a home. Let's rent a garage. Let's get a fucking field. Who cares? Yeah, because uh, that's the you Better just house. need to get out there, and it's hard in especially in BC because we're so so spread far apart. Like yeah. we got Kelowna, here, Kamloops, and Vancouver. Really? Yeah. That's that's like and and you don't really want to go to Kamloops to perform because there's not that many venues anyway. So, Dude, it's a weird, yeah, it's a weird concept and a weird time right now, especially with COVID. Um, and it's bands. Tough on everybody though. It's tough on everybody who's performing or not, or doing it professionally and getting paid if they're touring or whatever. Man, yeah, I that's can't even that's believe. definitely a benefit. We, we've we've tried to keep small amounts of practices going, two guys twice a week. Now the drummer's trying to get in once a week and get the singer back and get everybody in the same room, but they won't let us do that. So what do you do? We can't all hook up and play on the computer. So, yeah, you know, it's a, it's a weird time for sure, but it's also a cool time because with all this downtime, all these bands are writing so much music. Yeah. We've written some good stuff in the last COVID year. I'll tell you that our best right? stuff is coming. It's coming. We're scheduled to get out and get recording it and, another few weeks maybe in the middle of february start getting singles going again perfect that'd be awesome yeah. that's yeah. what you guys are planning then hey when covid yeah, slows we're down gonna, we're gonna launch a bunch of singles in a row hopefully and then an album at the end but we're not gonna wait a whole year to try and get an album done we want to get something out now right and so, i think that's that's what most bands are doing i think know, they've given up on that aspect of writing an album a full length yeah. at least put out three four songs yeah, go through it. Mm -hmm. Might as well get well, i don't think there's you can. Uh, I think the, you know, uh, back in the day, sort of the uh, let's put an album out type of attitude. Um, the way people consume music these days is a lot different than it used to be before. Yeah, so the I'm necessity of having, uh, you know, the, the whole package together, top, bottom, left and right with the concept and the songs in the right order. People don't really consume media in the same way. So I don't think that's as important anymore. And so I think, you know, just getting new material out to people is important. Um, yeah. yeah, the attention span of people is is definitely yeah, we not can there put anymore. It that way. I, I, I put it as we consume media differently i've recently yeah. taken to really listening to records again uh, listening to a lot of the stuff on vinyl and i find myself actually listening to music as the activity itself not mm -hmm. something that's going on while i'm doing something else because you actually have something physical to hold reading liner notes and yeah. physically listening to the music but once again it's a conscious effort to specifically listen to music now because yeah. we consume media differently yeah my attention span is gone ever since youtube and Pornhub, right? <laughs> no, for me, I I still have a I still love putting on an album from front to back. No shit. Especially hearing like what new bands put out because this, they've got some really cool trippy ideas where they've got like these weird intros and stuff, and like it's cool to see the progression in that aspect where bands are our style and um, like our level, I should say. Where we're not we're not super famous, but we do have that ability to write music that is on the same quality. It's a unique yeah. it's a unique time, which is awesome because it is. It is. we don't need record labels anymore. You know, That's we just right. need to, we just need to build that community again. I think we that community's gone. Mm -hmm. The unity. Yeah, for sure. Everybody helping everybody, so we all can get something out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you slowly see it. Like most bands that I've talked to are. They do do that when they can. It's once lockdown is done, I think more bands will be able to link up. But it's also why we kind of started this was because there is that weird reaching out to a band you've never met before and trying to yeah. ask for a show. But now with these interviews, like you've you've met the band kind of a thing, you know, you hear their yeah. music and it's more of like a connection factor where everyone can meet everyone and bands Absolutely. from all over can link so it's 
slowly but surely, the more interviews we do, the more bands we meet, the more people we have on the show, the bigger the community will grow. And then awesome. we have that ability to just be like, hey, we're coming to Vancouver. And you got five bands that are like, let's do it. Instead of trying to search out those five bands and have fun. because exactly. it's, it's so hard to find bands nowadays that are on the same level. They don't just want to do a show like this. They want to do it for their life. So they put on a good show, you know. Absolutely. It's it's a cool sure. time. And I think um, you know, uh, speaking to the you know the community and the unity and the support of each other, you know, and I think coming out of you know the tail, once we get over the the present situation and get back to business as usual, um, it, I think it is going to have an effect of, of unity and uh, scene uniting with um, supporting of other bands because you know not to rip on the metal community, but you know it's been known to be a bit competitive would be the nicest <laughs> way to put it, right? You know. I like to use the word pretentious. It takes a light bulb. It takes three. One to change the light bulb and two to stand there and say, I can do it faster. I find the worst is when people are pretentious about it, about metal. Just like. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's a weird when, like when you have those bands who sit outside at a show, you know what I mean? (laughs) In their van and they're too cool to hang out with the other bands or stand in the crowd and support. There's this weird animosity between bands like not all bands there's obviously bands you play with that you you're like oh shit let's go have a beer but i just find like there's that why book a show if there's that weird animosity you're not going to support each other and i'd like to see that change where yeah you know, absolutely. No, I, I have seen that change over the years i i have seen that change and really uh it's fallen by the wayside but metal can still be you know kind of competitive you know mm-hmm. um but you know, hoping for more unity and more supportiveness as opposed to that, maybe that will continue to fall by the wayside. Yeah, for sure. I definitely think uh, competition's good. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah. And you should be proud of your abilities. And if your band is good, like if I'm in a good band, you'll know about it. Exactly. I'll tell you. exactly. <laughs> but and then that, like Steve says, that's not being pretentious. No, that's no, no, no. Product, product, right? Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't get pretentious about it, but yeah. that's not our direction. I think, yeah. You know? But there's nothing wrong with a sense of pride in what you put out there if it's fun. Yeah, 100%. Be For me, it's if, something. yeah, definitely be proud. But when somebody comes up to you to be like, hey, man, you did a fucking awesome job. Thank thanks, them. Man. You know, oh, thanks right. them. <laughs> and that's where I find so like I've gone up to people at shows before and been like, hey man, it's killer show. And they're just like and walk away. And I'm like, bro. Really? Yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. Especially in our wow. scene. There's some bands that are like yeah. that. That's wow. Which is which is a sad thing. Like I have a that's a, not what it's about, man. For us. No, exactly, no. right? And we we do have a tight knit scene. Support. We're nothing. Yeah, because our There's scene is pretty tight knit. Noise. <laughs> yeah. We just yeah. hope someone else likes it besides us. Doesn't matter that much, but it does matter. Yeah, I think you know? I think you want to thank the people that help you by supporting you. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. Especially if it, even if it's, especially if it's another band too, because totally. coming from another musician, like anybody in a crowd can come up to you and be like, "Hey, good show," but like when another it's... musician who's dedicated their life coming up to you to be like, "Hey, man, I really liked what you did." That's a cool thing because that's a that's a win in anybody's eyes. You know what I mean? It so, good. if there was always anything you guys could, one another. pardon, go ahead. Always encourage one another, man. Oh, yeah. all your fellow musicians. Yeah, especially younger. Fucking yeah, especially the younger. Yeah, like there was a there's a band that um, I'm trying to set up an interview with, and they're out of high school in the states, and they're like a black metal band, and they're in high school, and I'm like, you know what, like. I just want to talk to these kids to see what they're like. Cause like yeah. you're 15 years old playing black metal. I think I have you, respect for you, you instantly. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, so it's a cool thing to see. Cause uh, it's not, it's not expected with the younger kids nowadays. Like I don't, oh. you, it's cool. Like there's, the world. yeah. And there's, world. there's a local kid here. He's, he's like 15 or something like that. And he's a crazy drummer and he's a crazy singer. And it's like, it's cool to see younger kids into metal at the level that we were when we were their age you know what i mean i know that's it, the reward yeah it's cool to see it definitely inspires to yeah, keep well, writing these days got way better gear than we had i tell you <laughs> <laughs> yeah technology. I, technology oh my god totally. no doubt you can yeah, make a sure. album in your bedroom yes you can, on your phone yeah, yeah. <laughs> record an album on your phone man i mean the awesome. first guy that i knew that had a pa and a microphone Boy, I made friends with him in a fucking hurry. <laughs> right? Yeah. It used to be so expensive, and now you can buy. Oh, it's just, you just, buy just it so cheap. the availability just wasn't there. Just yeah. wasn't there. Um, and there wasn't as much entry level gear either. 
You know, yep. there wasn't, you know, there wasn't, okay, here's the Cadillac version and here's the affordable version that will kind of do what you want to do with it. There was only the Cadillac version available, yeah. right? Yeah, no, that's definitely, and that's a cool, a cool aspect that I don't think people my age would even think about, you know what I mean? Like the companies we're, we're born with, we're just getting established when you guys were doing your bands. We're making our own pedals. Oh yeah, totally. Right. We did, there was, uh, I don't know how long I was playing, you know, music in general before I ever walked into a room that had a, a real tuner in it. Right. Like, you know, everybody's got me like, I, I go to, you know, I play with a few different groups of guys over the years and stuff like that. And then we're at a point now it's like, oh my God, nobody's got a snark. We can't play. Like, what the fuck did you do before you going to snark, man? You know, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, uh, the musicianship has not, I don't want to say declined. Because it hasn't. Like people have gotten way better at their instruments oh, over the time. It's gone but way that, up, if yeah, but that that connection, like being able to tune by ear, being able to pick up notes by ear, I find people are more trained by they, theory they, and yeah, there's, they, there's they less of that feel with based. different tools hey, to get mm -hmm. to the thanks same to YouTube. Place. Yeah, hey, definitely. Thanks to YouTube. YouTube. It's, it's and it's cool we that anyone can by learn ear it. Off playing to our favorite albums on cassette tape, just playing along, man literally that's how i learned it yeah yeah like pre-internet even just getting lyrics right um mm -hmm. i can tell you with complete honesty to get the lyrics to a song and i only had it on vinyl um i had the had the girl writing it down and i was picking the needle up and putting it down to get the phrases that's how to get the lyrics and then i had to keep my paper handwritten copied if i fucking lost that i had to go back to the record to get the words again right, right? yeah it's... Now, now i'd be at a practice with somebody else and he was missing a lick in a song he'd sit down pull out his phone pull out a lesson hit youtube oh okay put his phone away that's what i was doing wrong yeah. so um i'm more jealous than anything <laughs> you know <laughs> but it's also been interesting to watch the technology make life a lot easier mm-hmm yeah, and I definitely think that that it makes things uh, more enjoyable for everyone. Because, for example, you guys can record at home kind of a thing if you needed to. You don't have to go and spend $5,000 to go into a studio and do it on tape. If you fuck up, you're like, God damn it, we got no more tape left. So, like, it's 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 a nice change for sure. Uh, the The ability, yeah, the ability to write music as freely as we can now is beautiful. Yeah, because get it out there. Yeah, it's that. That's the hardest part about that is being seen and getting heard. Because yeah. it's easy to get out there, but to be seen and heard is the hardest part. You have to become a business then at that point. Yep. If there was anything in the uh, industry you guys could change, what do you think it would be? Because <sighs> you've watched it evolve from the absolute it's perfect time. Back. It's uh, so different from what it was. It 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 not big corporations and you know everybody's going on independence and uh i, I don't know there's a lot of uh, that's a toughie i don't know how i would how i would respond to that anything i would yeah. want to change. <laughs> i don't know uh more booze on gig riders i guess yeah. <laughs> that's it because no seriously I, that's actually an honest answer you know yeah. more uh more uh not the money's the money it's all math it's all business at the end of the day that's a widget right how much you can get you can get out of a gig what you can bring in and your percentage of what you're worth whatever that yeah. is yeah but just to that's cater to the musicians just a little bit more you know yeah for sure hospitality for him you know and you know that, that type of thing so yeah more booze on the rider yeah what happened to like the one free drink or if the Two venue free drinks. Drinks. <laughs> boy, back in the day boy. right exactly it's now oh, it's we can't like, go on yet we haven't finished the booze rider yet yeah no and it's uh i definitely think that plus um the way things are how we're paid like it's it's nice how would you that, change that though i said like i didn't know how to respond to that yeah the, the, yeah, the money aspect but that's just sort of the value of entertainment no i uh, mean for like the streaming and most bands most bands will have have i think have said that that they wish that the streaming aspect for us getting paid would be different and there's there's actually a petition going around right now for uh bands to make one cent off of every stream i think it is it was in my email today. I have I haven't had a chance to read it yet, but uh, well, musicians would... have never been paid what they're what they should be paid, in my opinion, ever. No, it'd be cool to see. Um, there's a band from Vancouver, and their basis was saying it'd be cool to see um, the Canadian government or governments in general have like make it because it's a job. 
it's it is it's uh it's self-employment yeah it would be you know what i mean but but it's based off of how many gigs you can do how many albums it's not like a full-time you've got a wage coming in it'd be cool to see musicians who do it at a full-time level and dedicate it get paid a certain wage like even if it's minimum yeah like minimum wage or a salary like that's your livelihood yeah you know know what i mean that would be based on a peak season oh we did 20 gigs in the summer and now we've got nothing for the rest of the year yeah, it would yeah, be cool to see. Yeah. I, think that- um, I, w- I would just chime in with the, the streaming by all means from, from all reports, musicians are just getting fucked on that one, right? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure they're aware of, you know, what cut they're supposedly entitled to. I'm so ignorant to this process. You know, yeah, myself. so am I, honestly, so um, am but I. But all I know is people ain't getting no money, right? I've, you know, seen the, the memes with the, you know, hey. I think it's you get paid, things, right? I think you get $5,000 for a million streams. Okay. And then you got to think about, paying everybody else out and stuff and then the band members yeah. so the numbers that they do they make is it's really small after paying everybody out because it seems like the table's tilted from the onset doesn't it yeah right like <laughs> back in the day like the rock stars could buy fucking anything they wanted now not really <laughs> rock stars are paying to record yeah exactly Nobody's right buying, buying paying for it yeah no Nobody's for sure for You're paying out of your pocket for your own stuff nowadays yeah we do yeah, you got to invest in your career, or else no one else will. It's a but that, that has that's never changed. That's always been the case, you know. Yeah. Go do you look back to the guys that were successful and the, the amount of nesting they had to start out with, right? And what had to be put out just to get their themselves established. You know, Guns and Roses is a good example where they hired a lawyer before they ever hired a manager or ever had a, a record deal yep. to protect the financial interests of it, right? Yeah, and that it is that it is a business at this time. It's not a. In this it day and age, it, it has to be business. Right? Yeah. Um, it's it's a great business, you know. It, it happens in nightclubs with cool people, and there's booze and loud music and stuff. But it is still a business at the end yeah. of the day, right? You exactly. Know, we talk about getting paid. We got to talk about what came in the door before we can talk about going out the door. Yeah. Cool. Is there anything you guys want to say to the viewers before we wrap up? Uh, watch our video. Did you see our video? I don't think I have had a chance. Yet. Oh my god! You haven't watched our video yet, Steve. No. You put me in here with this guy, and he hasn't watched our video yet. <laughs> You'll have to send it to me. I, I saw, I Watch our video. For him. Well, well Nor- Norm's it. coming tomorrow, and Norm then we'll. It. Oh, did Norm post it? Yeah, he did. Perfect. Well, he's coming tomorrow to film an episode. So what we'll do is we'll do a a video, re- not a video review, but like a video episode where we watch your guys' music video, and we haven't well, seen that, it yet. Yeah, and yeah, we couldn't ask for anything more than that. That would be great. Right. Like the video, um, you know. Uh, we put, you know, an entire evening into it and a handful of money and it came out pretty good. Uh, we yes. kind of threw it against the wall with, you know, half an idea and some, you know, limited skill set. We think it came out really good. That's awesome. I think this was always my favorite music videos. I just like, hope everybody keeps the faith and we can unite and get, keep going when this whole COVID thing starts and just start playing again. Oh, we will. I, we have a wicked wow. music scene here where we are. It's just we have no venues. <laughs> I think I think if all our, if all all us bands got together and we rented out a, a hall and put on like a a seven band show from like two o'clock till eleven o'clock, yeah, I think that ton of people would come. <laughs> Fucking right. So I think I think we'll eventually once everything opens up again, we'll try to get everybody to do a show together because we well, and, yeah. and we go, we don't got moonins anymore, so we'll make something happen. All right, guys. We paint the corral, man. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, guys. Thanks for having me and coming by and doing this interview. Thanks Cheers. a lot, Rob. Man. It's awesome. All, All right, guys. With, uh, with your uh, music, too, bud. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Cheers. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is my customer service voice. Thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and fucking hit the bell, all right? So you can stay up to date on all the new episodes.